Number five is a very tough question. I would say that about half of my students get this wrong. It might even be more than that. And it's because they, they don't really follow the instructions of the question. So if we look at it, it says to go to lines 43 to 52. Now we've learned from other questions in this, in this test that we need to follow the plus one sentence rule, which means we need to read a sentence before and after these line references just to play it safe. However, that's even more important on this question because of the instructions in the question itself. It says, in the context of the conversation between Nawab and Haruni, Nawab's comments in 43 to 52 mainly serve too. So, yeah, they're telling us to go to 43 to 52, but they're also saying, look beyond that. In the context of the conversation, what are they saying? So let's go there. I'd start a sentence before here. The landowner who is cheerfully filing his nails in front of a crackling rosewood fire told him to go ahead. So this is just the start of the conversation. Here's what they're telling us to reference. This is the actual line reference. Sir, as you know, your land stretch from here to the Indus, and on these lands are fully 17 tube wells. And to tend these 17 tube wells, there is but one man, me, your servant. In your service, I have earned these gray hairs. Here he bowed his head to show the gray. And now I cannot fulfill my duties as I should. Enough, sir, enough. I beg you, forgive me my weakness. Better a darkened house and proud hunger within this dis within than disgrace in the light of day. Release me, I ask you, I beg you. Well, it sounds like he wants to quit. So that seems pretty straightforward. He wants to quit the job. And, and sure enough, if we look at the choices, um, D matches with that. But this is a trap. Notify Haruni that Nawab intends to quit his job tending the tube wells. Well, how could that not be true? It says, I beg, I beg you, release me, right? It sounds like he's saying exactly that. But if we read the context, or if we read the entire conversation, we get a lot more information about what's going on here. So we go to the next piece. The old man, well accustomed to these sorts of speeches, though not usually this florid, filed away at his nails and waited for a breeze to stop. What's the matter, Nawab Din? So we've got one clue here. Well accustomed to these sorts of speeches. So this is not the first time that Nawab has tried to quit or complained in some way. So this is, this is telling us maybe he's not actually quitting. We keep going. Matter, sir, oh, what could be the matter in your service? I've eaten your salt for all my years, but sir, on the bicycle now with my old legs and with the many injuries I've received when heavy machinery fell on me, oof, Sounds rough. I cannot any longer bicycle about like a bridegroom from farm to farm as I could when I first had the good fortune to enter your employment. I beg you, sir, let me go. Again, he wants to quit. But we keep reading. What's the solution, asked Rooney, seeing that they had come to the crux, meaning what they're really talking about. He didn't particularly care one way or the other, except that it touched on his comfort, a matter of great interest to him. Well, sir... If I had a motorcycle, then I could somehow limp along, at least until I train up some younger man. So then Haruni says he's, he'll give him the, the motorcycle. So this is not about, I want to quit your, the job. This is, I want a motorcycle. So there's, there's a literal thing that Nawab is saying. But if we read beyond that, we realize that that's not actually what he's saying. He has another agenda. And so we have to answer this question based on the big picture of what Nawab wants here, the motorcycle. So now we can look at these choices and, and we can see if there's a better one than choice D. Is he trying to flatter Haruni by mentioning how vast his lands are? No, he says a lot of negative things about Haruni, about how, you know, this job has kind of beaten him down and he's old and machinery is falling on him. So flatter is positive. I don't think we've got a lot of flattering going on here. Boast to Haruni about how competent and reliable Nawab is? No, he constantly says how beaten down and old and feeble he is. He's complaining and saying that he, he can't do the job. So boast is the wrong word. C, emphasize Nawab's diligence and loyalty to Haruni. Well, now we've got something. He's basically saying in these lines about how old and decrepit he has become through, this, through the years, is saying how hard he has worked. It's, he's worked so hard, it's beaten him down. He's a feeble old man now. 
And he's using that to say, well, maybe I deserve this motorcycle that would help me out. So he's really buttering up uh, Haruni, not by flattering Haruni, but by kind of like flattering himself and saying like all the good hard work he's done for this guy that maybe he deserves to get this motorcycle. So I, I don't think that choice C is a great answer. I, I don't think that I would have picked that just kind of reading this and maybe if it was a short answer question where I had to write an essay about it. I don't think my essay would include choice C. So that's what's tricky about the SAT sometimes is what, what, I, what we take away isn't always what the answer choices are going to take away. But I think the key here is noticing that choice D is the trap. And we can do that by knowing the way the SAT operates. And when they say things like in the context of the conversation, follow instructions, do what they say, read the entire conversation, and understand the purpose here. And that way, the most tricky choice can kind of get crossed out and leave you at least with a shot at guessing at some of these more difficult ones. So just be careful. This is something that they do a lot on the literature passage. Because remember, these are stories and these characters are real human beings, so they behave like you and me. And real human beings sometimes lie, sometimes they joke, sometimes they say one thing, but they mean something different. And that's why this question is hard. They usually do this kind of thing like once per SAT, once per literature passage. So just be on the lookout for it.